QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Transaction List by Date Report. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to take a look at a transaction report by date. So I'm going to locate it first, then we'll discuss it, and then we'll go into it. So it's in the reports drop down, it's in the accounting and taxes. And we want to take a look at the transaction list by date report. Now, this is report, report is useful for a few different reasons. Obviously, like all other reports, it's supporting information on the major reports, the major financial reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, expanding on the information in those reports. But it's going to be listing out all the transactions in a certain date range. That could also be really good for billing. If you want to move from an hourly billing rate, which can be kind of tedious, if you can move to a billing rate, that has some kind of standardization such as I'm going to bill you so much for if you're within this range of transactions within the time period, then that can make your billing system a lot easier to to set up. So I would recommend a system like that. Also, if you're reviewing work, if you're reviewing work for someone that's working for you, then this is a great report to do that. You can assign them you know, work that's going to be done and you can check what has actually been done with the transaction list report. If, of course, you're grading work, you can have a similar kind of process, great report to test for the grading of the work as well. Now, this is going to be a report that's going to supplement the activity that has happened on the balance sheet and the income statement. So, in other words, these items right here, the forms are going to be creating the financial transactions, the journal entries. Those journal entries are used to then construct balance sheet and income statement. And uh, you can drill down on the detail of how that is happening by going down to the transaction reports, basically the general ledger reports. And this is another report that basically gives you kind of a list of, of what actually happens, how the balance sheet and income statement are being constructed over this range of time listed by not GL specific to each account, but rather by transaction listed by date. So let's first open the balance sheet and the income statement. So I'm going to go to the company drop down and uh, I'm sorry, the reports drop down company and financial balance sheet standard. We'll change the date. Let's go to the customize up top to do so. We're going to change it from 010121 to 022821. And then I'm going to say OK. Let's open up the PNL as well. So we're going to go to the reports drop down, company and financial. We're going to go to the profit and loss standard, changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821. So here's our reports. We can see that they have been constructed from the transactions here, basically the forms on the home page by simply double clicking on it. If I want more detail on this items, I can double click on any line item, get a transaction detailed by account report, basically a general ledger type of report, listing the activities by date, but it's specific to a particular type of account. If I wanted to see an overview of what has happened or what has the change been to the financial statements, the profit and loss and the balance sheet, over a specific time over the yesterday or like last month or something like that then i can run a report that's going to list the transactions by date rather than by account so let's do that's what we're going to do now we're going to go to the reports drop down you can find it in the accounting and taxes it's in the transaction list by date transaction list by date you can compare and contrast that to the transaction detail by account the transaction detail by account is going to list it out, you know, by the account that, that are being affected. But there's two accounts affected at least per transaction. If we just want to list the transactions, no matter how many accounts were affected, then we want the one transaction list by date. I'm also going to find it in the report center by going to the reports drop down report center. And then we can find that uh, report as well. I'm going to maximize the report center. It's going to go to the standard tab. We're going to go down to the accounting and taxes accounting and taxes and i'm going to scroll down so that there's the transaction by account i don't want that one right now i'd like to go to the by date item transaction deleted trans transaction list by date there's the one there it is and now it popped back up to the top again i'm going to scroll back down and find it again so there's the transaction list by date let's go ahead and run that one gonna see what it looks like here changing the dates up top from 010121 to 022821 and there's going to be uh, our information now it looks a little bit overwhelming 
Uh, but again, if you run this, like if you if you enter data monthly or something as a bookkeeper or something like that, or if you're supervising someone who's entering data on a monthly basis, then of course you can review what is going on with them, what they have done by looking first at the end product, balance sheet income statement, and that's gonna tell you, you know, at the end point. And if you wanna drill down on what actual activities were input, how much work was actually done, if you're trying to figure that kind of thing out, uh, rather than look at the time clock, you, and, or you can compare this to the time clock and see how long it takes to enter something per transaction or something like that. You can go to the transaction list by date, and that'll line things up uh, not by account, but rather by date. And so if you're billing in this system, you can see a system such as you can basically uh, say, I'm gonna, if, if you're within this range of transactions and this billing cycle per week or per month or so on, then I will charge so much. And you can standardize your billing system so that when you create your invoice and your lists, rather than just having an hourly invoice, you can break it down by specific amount of transactions. And I, I, that's a way that can, can, if you think about a method of billing in that way, I think that can be useful. It's also a lot clearer to the client oftentimes because when you just say I have an hourly rate, it's kind of ambiguous in terms of how well how long does it take to do you know certain things if you give them a report and say hey look this is all the re transactions we recorded and uh, i'm charging you if you're in this range of transactions you know now you have something that's kind of concrete so this report looks like we have the types on the left hand side and this is going to give us the the types of forms that we're using so we're seeing basically those items on the home page that are being used to construct the financial statements we have the dates of the transaction, number if applicable, that would be the account number, or if we had some other spot in the number, such as deposit or not any number, name, that would include the customers, if, we're, if we have a customer involved, vendors, or other, if they're involved, or nothing, if we don't have any name in the transaction. Uh, account, the accounts that are going to be involved. Now, if there's two accounts, it'll be nice and split up here, in that you'll have the account uh, and this is like the main account that's driven by the form. So if it's a deposit slip, then it's going to say checking account. And then the split item means the other account. Means that, you know, that's the other account. Every transaction has at least two accounts. And this one's going to owner investment. And then the amount cleared means it's cleared. Uh, the checking account, uh, it's, it's cleared. We've reconciled uh, the item. So you can tie this information out to the financials as well by saying, okay, Here's this one on 1121. It's in the checking account and the owner investment. So if I go then to the, to the uh, balance sheet, checking account, double click on the checking account. Now we have the transaction detail by account specific to the checking account. And there's there it is right there. The other side's in the owner investment, closing that back out. It's gonna be down here in the owner uh, investment, double clicking on that. And there's the other transaction. So you can see this is another report that's of course just showing the guts of, showing the detail of the kind of things that were put together in order to make the financial statements, the balance sheet, and the income statement. Going back to the transaction list, uh, also note if, if you have more than two accounts involved or if there's something other something else that's kind of funny happening, you'll have the split over here. So if you, if you double click on it, then you can see the accounts that will be involved in it. So if I double click on it, uh, this is an invoice. An invoice has, because we're selling inventory, has multiple accounts affected. It's not just two accounts that are affected. So you can't just get the, the number of accounts that are gonna be affected here. And notice when you do the billing, uh, you could, <clears throat> there, there's some transactions like payroll <laughs> that are a whole lot more complex than others. And so if you're gonna count by, by the number of transactions, then if there are certain transactions that are more complex, then again, you could change your rate for that. Like, you know what I mean? You could, ch you could charge by the, the number of accounts that were basically affected or something like that, or payroll transactions, which are gonna be more complex, something that's not within the normal uh, cycle here, possibly something that falls outside of, of the actual forms that you're gonna use when you record something and or payroll itself would typically be an add-on feature because obviously you have to pay more for payroll. So you're gonna have to build the payroll uh, separately as well. But in any case, you'll see the splits here and you can then and then you can break out the splits by actually drilling down on the data as you would if you were going from the financial statements drilling down on the information.